Deinonychus. Light, small, fast, big eyes that missed nothing. This was Deinonychus. Check those big eyes out, eh? Light, small, fast, agile, with a big brain and big eyes. Deinonychus was a fearsome predator of the Cretaceous. Although not quite as famous as Velociraptor, it was Deinonychus that led to the dinosaur renaissance. Up until then, dinosaurs had thought to be dull-witted, slow-moving laggards. But when they dug up Deinonychus, they realized that dinosaurs were vastly different to that perception that people had had. So the discovery of Deinonychus turned all that thinking on its head. No longer were dinosaurs viewed as those dim-witted creatures that lumbered around in the Jurassic and the Cretaceous and the Triassic. Then it was time that they went extinct because they were so useless. So if we haven't met before, my name is Gerald Davey. I am the Dino Man and I head up the Dino Zone. So we have an online dinosaur website called thedinozone.com. Don't put in www, it's just go straight to the Dino Zone. We have an Instagram page, so that's at all things dinosaur. We'll put all the links down below. So please subscribe to all those channels. Please Please subscribe to this channel please give us a thumbs up please share please like please hit that notification button we can't wait to have you along on this journey part of this whole dinosaur adventure so we're building up more and more videos it all takes time effort and money so your feedback and your comments and your likes and your subscriptions are absolutely vital to us it makes it worth a while and if you're in the geographical vicinity come and check out the dino zone so we've got a half-sized T-Rex model there, we've got a dinosaur dig, we've got fossils, we've got ammonites, we've got amazing rocks, we've got amazing minerals, we've got some crust that goes back three and a half billion years when the earth was still young. We've got a whole pile of different rocks that have direct impact or influence or associations on our modern day lives. We've got iron ore, we've got talcum powder, we've got asbestos, which is all closed up, of course, and we don't want people getting sick from our asbestos. We've got some dinosaur fossils. You can measure yourself up against a brachiosaur leg and you can come and mine gemstones in our mining sluice, all right? So that's what's happening at the dinosaur. So we look forward to welcoming you there. Can't wait, in fact. All right, so um, let's get on with the video, learn about Deinonychus and the amazing discovery which led in part to the dinosaur renaissance with John Ostrom and Robert T. Backer. So a light-framed, fast, agile predator turned the whole idea of dinosaurs being dim-witted laggards on its head. How cool is that? And this is further borne out by the high brain to body weight ratio that showed that Deinonychus had a really high intelligence level by Cretaceous standards. And up until then, it was thought that dinosaurs were cold-blooded. But for an animal to be able to hunt and move at that fast pace, it had to be a warm-blooded creature. So that also started changing that whole idea of whether that dinosaurs were cold-blooded creatures. And I remember back when I was at university, that theory was coming into play and we thought, wow, okay, so the thinking has actually changed because we, all, we were brought up on the idea that dinosaurs were all cold-blooded. And so our professor who lectured us, well, he was a doctor actually, he was talking about all these new theories that were coming out and one of them was that dinosaurs were actually warm-blooded, which was quite an amazing thing at the time. And now it's widely accepted that dinosaurs, well, some of them at least, were warm-blooded. And you need warm-bloodedness to be able to support that hunting lifestyle. You need to be able to get up and go when you're on the hunt. Cold-blooded creatures weren't able to do that. And furthermore, the similarity of the skeletons to that of birds led to the idea birds were descended from dinosaurs. So it was John Ostrom who came up with this idea that birds were the descendants of dinosaurs, and he did a whole load of work on Archaeopteryx, which is an intermediary fossil between birds and dinosaurs. But we will make another video about that at some later stage. So Deinonychus, as you can see, her hunted on two legs. He had sharp teeth, powerful jaws, Check these things. This is a fantastic model, actually. If you want to buy one, you can buy one from the Dinozone. Yeah, I'll go to an online shop. So it had these fantastically sharp teeth, these slashing claws on its feet, and then it had these long claws on its hands, which were pretty good for slashing and grabbing too. So that allowed Deinonychus to jump onto the back of, a, of its prey and slash and do its damage. So there is a theory that Deinonychus hunted in packs. So imagine 10, 20 of these things on your back, slashing away, biting at you. You're not going to last for very long. So that slashing claw was 13 centimeters long, which for those of you who still are on imperial measurements, that's five inches. 
which would have allowed them to bring down large prey like ankylosauruses and sauropods. Tenentosaurus may have been among its prey. The evidence for that was that they found the bones of Deinonychus along with Tenentosaurus. So there might have been a hunt going on and someone got damaged or both got damaged and they both died together. It stood 1.2 to 1.5 meters tall, so that would be a big threat to you and me and weighed about 80 kilos, so that's just slightly less than what I weigh. So um, if you were out there on the open, I want to use the word savanna, on the open plains of the Cretaceous and you were to come across a Deinonychus, that thing could be pretty scary. It's nearly as tall as you and it's going to make mincemeat of you. And you're not going to be able to run away. So the first fossil of Deinonychus was found by Barnum Brown back in 1931. So if you watched our other videos, particularly the one on T-Rex, there's the link to that video somewhere up here or the, in the description below. Um, and Barnum Brown was the first guy to discover and describe a, a Tyrannosaurus rex. So he also found the first fossil of Deinonychus back in 1931. So John Ostrom and his sidekick, his field assistant, Grant E. Mayer, were walking along a slope back in 1964, August, late late summer and um, end of a long day and um, I guess they might have been heading for home and they saw this claw sticking out of an eroded mound and they tumbled down the slope. In fact, John Ostrom talks about it. There's a, uh, I'm going to quote from the New York Times here. John Ostrom said, we both nearly rolled down the slope in our rush to the spot and I think I would have also gone rushing down the slope to see what, what was sticking out of the ground. And they uncovered a powerful three-fingered grasping claw and then a foot. The inner toe stuck out like a sharply curved sickle, and we all know what a sickle looks like, used for cutting grass and wheat and crops, certainly back in the Middle Ages anyway. And after digging the bones up and hauling them back to the lab, John Ostrom determined that the bones belonged to a fleet-footed predatory dinosaur that lived during the Cretaceous 125 million years ago. And he gave the animal the name Deinonychus, which means terrible claw. And I think those claws are pretty terrible, particularly if you were wandering around on the plains of the Cretaceous in the middle of America way back then. So well done to John Ostrom and Grant E. Mayer for discovering Deinonychus and doing that fantastic work and building that link between birds and dinosaurs and uh, writing all those fantastic scientific papers. So John Ostrom is one of those who led the dinosaur renaissance. The other character in that story was none other than Robert T. Backer. So we will make a video on both of those paleontologists as time goes by. So thank you for watching through to the end. This is the sixth video of the keys to the dinosaur kingdom. So I'm going to put the code up, which you're going to put into the software, and then that's going to open the keys to the dinosaur kingdom. All right. So download the PDF in the link below and um, fill it all in. There's one to 10 videos. And once you've got all 10, we'll tell you how to open up the keys to the dinosaur kingdom and the bone diggers club. All right. So what's not to like about that? Right, so thank you for your time. Thank you for watching this video. Look out for all the other ones that are going to be posted up. And uh, until next time, take care of yourself. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye.